Well, greetings out there on YouTube land and welcome to today's video, which is part two in a two-part series featuring the restoration of a really rough old 1960 or 61 Gibson GA2RT amplifier. As you may recall, this was sent to us very generously by a viewer named Big Dave. Uh, and in part one, uh, we set about to get it working uh, to restore the circuitry. And in part two, we're going to focus more on the cabinet. So let's get started. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. All right, I think step one ought to be to clean up the floor and walls of the cabinet. You see the white specks are on the inside of this uh, cabinet, so that means this is a truly spectacular vintage amp. Okay, let's see over here. You notice there were pencil uh, numbers on that side and initials on this side. We'll be careful not to hurt them. Now you can read the pencil writing a little more clearly. It looks like 36377. I don't know, that might be the serial number. And over here we have, say, 81TB. Um, the floor is drying out. I use a disinfectant uh, material on it. And now it's time to reattach this loose tweed that's flapping in the breeze. And in this particular case, I thought it best to just remove the tweed from the wood completely so that I can get a good application of contact cement uh, without trying to, you know, stick it under the tweed, which never works well. So uh, this should go back on really nicely. When I'm reattaching a big piece of tweed like this, or any type of Tolex material, I apply a really heavy coat of contact cement to the wood set the material down on it and roll it with a linoleum roller to transfer uh, an even coat of the contact cement to the back of the material then lift it up and let it dry till it's barely tacky and when you lay it back down it will stick like grim death now I'm cleaning the cabinet with this car guys a premium super cleaner. I've sprayed some on the top. I'm letting it uh, work for a while on the dirt and then we'll wipe it clean and see what we uh, come up with on the rag. Okay, I hope you uh, haven't eaten recently. Well, here's the rag and here is the top and I think you'll see there's a tremendous improvement in its cleanliness and appearance. I'm going to try to scrape that little spot off, but uh, I'm really impressed. Now that the cabinet is all cleaned up inside and out, and all of the tweed has been reattached where it was loose, uh, let's go back to our speaker baffle and uh, start to uh, apply the grill cloth to it. Now after painting the screw heads black so they won't uh, shine through the grill cloth, I'm going to have to reinstall the grill cloth uh, it, the way that it was installed originally, which is not optimum. Uh, I hate having to staple along the sides here uh, without wrapping around, but I love this grill cloth and I want to reuse it. Okay, so I'm going to get up my pneumatic stapler and start uh, reattaching the grill cloth to the baffle. Now, step one is I take a piece of masking tape and tape along the grill cloth here and then round it around to the rear of the baffle. Now, the reason I do this is first off to hold it down to make it easier to staple but secondly when you're going to put this back into the cabinet I think you can see as you're forcing the baffle into the cabinet how the end of the grill cloth is going to fight you. It's going to stick and, and keep the baffle from going in. The masking tape rounding around here will eliminate that and actually sort of give a smooth surface here for it to slide into the cabinet. Okay, I went down the line and stapled through the masking tape and the material into the wood and the staples seem to be holding fairly well. Now we'll go over and do the opposite side. Okay, the grill cloth is tight as a drum here and we've got the a masking tape covering that end of the material so that it can't interfere with us 
uh, installing the baffle back in the cabinet. Uh, so let's grab the cabinet and see if we can't get this to fit back in. Well, it went back in with a minimum of cursing, shrieking, and beating with a sledgehammer. Uh, but it is in. Also, I didn't really realize it when I took it out that uh, the baffle is sloped uh, backward uh, away from you at the top so that the speaker then will project upward into the room, which is always a good idea. Also, the grill cloth is real snug here. It's just like a drum head the way you want it. Now let's uh, install those eight nuts and washers to uh, really secure the baffle into the cabinet. All right, all eight of the studs holding the front baffle are uh, securely bolted down, and now it's time to install the speaker. Well, the speaker is safely ensconced in the cabinet. It has to be sideways so that the tubes can miss the Alnico magnet and so that the speaker leads from the chassis can reach down here to the uh, leads on the speaker. Also, that new Accutronics tank has been rubber mounted to the floor of the cabinet. Uh, I believe the original tank was uh, 7 inches long too because the holes at the rear lined up with the holes in the cabinet. Well, the chassis now has been returned to, uh, to the cabinet. Um, to do that, I lay the cabinet on its side and the chassis on its side so that I'm not having to lift the chassis while I'm trying to line up the screws and start the nut inside. Okay, so it fit in uh, real nicely. The speaker wires are connected. The uh, reverb tank uh, cables are connected. And uh, I've got just a couple more uh, little details here. And then I'm going to have to uh, fabricate the rear door panel for it. And that's essential because it will cover the circuit and uh, prevent anybody from getting electrocuted. Well, it looks like we got a nice uh, box from Terry Harrison. Jack is performing the ritual CAT scan on this. Uh, Casey's over here with her little hot uh, chili pepper full of catnip and checking things out. So let's open it up and see what Terry has sent us. Well, the suspense is building here. We've got all sorts of these little air pouches and then two smaller boxes. So let's get them open. While Jack occupies himself with the packing material, we see here that the first box, the smaller box, is absolutely full of vintage tube bases on tube sockets. Wow! Very useful and you can't have too many of these. So thanks Terry. Now it's time to look in the larger box. And now the larger box is open and we have the 300 watt incandescent light bulb, perfect for the current limiter. Um, a really nice size of uh, shrink wrap. Uh, for the uh, wiring. A whole bunch of 1 and 2 amp fuses, which I never have enough of these for sure. An assortment of some really unusual pilot lights and most important, cat-wise of course, is the little catnip fill mice, which I'm going to open right now and present to our two uh, cat scanners. Oh, Casey's already excited about these, so let me open them up and see what the kitties think. And there goes Jack. Boy, I'll tell you, Terry, this was the catnip filled mice were a hit. So the kitties and I really appreciate your generous gift, and I look forward to using many of these parts in future amp builds, and the kitties will have lots of mice to play with. Well, it's all together now except for that back panel which I'm in the process of making and I just can't resist plugging a guitar into this thing and checking out how it sounds. Okay, so let's see. <laughs>
let's try the tremolo. It's uh, like about a 2 on speed and about a 5 on intensity. <laughs> Let's try the reverb. This is at about uh, a setting of 5 out of 10. You know, I'm really not pleased with the reverb in this amp. And uh, they're supposed to have fantastic reverbs, and this one's very weak. So, besides the new Accutronics tank that I've installed on the floor of the cabinet, I've also uh, now inserted a Fender uh, style of uh, tank driving transformer that's appropriate for the Accutronics tank that I installed. Uh, let's strum a few chords and see uh, how it works. We've got the reverb her set at like one quarter. Uh, I'm going to put the camera on the tripod and we'll see how it sounds. Wow, I guess the reverb uh, really does respond to that new transformer. Let's go up to half, which is probably more than we can stand. too much. Uh, let's back off here to about uh, three and a half. Well, I think the reverb problem is solved. I'm going to go ahead and permanently install the uh, Fender transformer here in place of the Gibson reverb driver. Here's the original uh, Gibson Reverb Driving Transformer, and here's a new Fender style. Um, this is a classic tone, so out with the old and in with the new. And there is the Fender style Reverb Driving Transformer secured to the chassis and wired in place of the original uh, Gibson Transformer. Okay, now it's time to make the upper back door that's what was missing. Uh, I got a piece of 3 8 inch plywood. It's sort of like the plywood they used in the amplifier cabinet and I have cut it uh, to size and shape and then uh, cut out the vent holes at the rear for the tubes. Uh, now it's time to cover it uh, with some tweed material. Okay, here's the kind of yellowish tweed material. Very similar to what uh, Fender uses, if not identical. Uh, it's not going to exactly match the cabinet, but it's about as close as I can get. So it's time to cut out an appropriate size piece and start covering the uh, plywood back door. Okay, I cut out a piece that uh, has enough margin to wrap around. Now, if you've never worked with tweed before, well, you're lucky because it's, it's um, just a mess, a nightmare to work with. It's thick. It doesn't tend to hold down very well. The pattern is fussy. It's hard to match up. Uh, panels and things like that. Uh, so don't be in a big hurry to cover your amp cabinet with tweed. Okay, I'm now going to flip uh, this over and it's going to get sprayed uh, with the contact adhesive and I'm going to put a couple heavy coats of contact uh, cement on this side. Uh, this will be brushed on, the back of this will be sprayed. Okay, I just troweled on a nice thick uh, brush coat of the glue and I'm going to use my trusty pink hair dryer here 
to speed up the drawing. Uh, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Okay, the shine is more or less gone now. It's reasonably dry. It's a little tacky to the touch, but it won't transfer to your finger. Okay, now it's time to go spray the back of the uh, material, and then we'll put them together. Okay, the rear of the tweed material now is a heavy spray coat of Pro Foam and Fabric Spray Adhesive. You don't want amateur, it's got to be pro. Okay, now it's time to set the wood down within uh, the lines that I drew on the back of the material. Okay, I rolled the outside uh, with the linoleum roller and now I'm going to apply a nice thick coat of cement all the way around the perimeter so that the uh, overlaps can be held down snugly. Okay, I'll use the uh, hair dryer again to dry the contact cement uh, to hold down the fold overs. Now it's time to fold it over, okay, and uh, we'll cut the corners at 45 degree angles. I'll show you how it ends up. Now after you've rolled it down really hard, uh, then cut a 45 degree angle and continue that cut all the way down to the bottom of the wood so that this side just lays flat. Next we're going to fold over the sides. Then after you folded this side over, um, cut uh, a line exactly matching the 45 from below, take away the extra, that, and press it and you'll have an invisible seam, and then use scissors to cut uh, this corner. Now the back of the panel should look like this, held down really tight with nice clean mitered corners. And now the fun's about to begin as we start to cut uh, the vent holes and fold the material over. Now one long slit uh, down the center and then little like chicken feet here at the ends and then just start folding over. Okay, after folding all the pieces over you roller them with the linoleum uh, roller and uh, if this flap here overlaps the top then just cut right down the line here of, of the top edge and remove the extra so that they butt together right here in a flush seam. Okay, now it's time to do the other one. There we have a nice finished upper uh, tweed rear panel and I'm going to take a sharp, uh, like a uh, ice pick, heat it up with a blowtorch and burn the holes through the material uh, for the four screws that are going to hold it onto the cabinet. Then for a finishing touch, after applying uh, the tweed material to the wood, I'm going to uh, put on two or three coats of Minwax Fast Drying Polyurethane. This is the clear semi-gloss uh, type. It has a, a slight yellowish tint though, which gives a really great kind of a mellow amber look to the tweed. There I have a nice even coat. I tend to brush along with the uh, direction of the grain of the tweed if you will. Uh, now I'm going to let this dry overnight and see if I need another another coat tomorrow. This is the second coat. Okay here we have the original tweed material and here is the back door that was covered with this material after two heavy coats of fast drying Minwax polyurethane. Now I know fast drying and polyurethane are kind of self contradictory but in this case it really does dry in several hours and it gives kind of a nice sheen. You see this is sort of dull but it gives us that nice uh, sheen. It sort of seals the material would make it more stain resistant and more durable. So I really recommend after you go through the nightmare of applying the tweed to a cabinet Go ahead and coat it either with this or a similar material. And finally, here's our finished upper rear panel installed with finishing washers and Phillips head screws. If you notice that now it's been coated, it has a similar sheen and a general appearance to the top tweed. However, the sides are darker and, of course, far more stained than the rear. But, let's face it, in about 60 more years of abuse and neglect, uh, the rear panel will probably end up looking just like that. Okay, uh, we can only hope. 
Now that we're at the rear of the cabinet, oh, we can see that I've put the reverb driver transformer and the original filter caps into the bottom uh, here where uh, they can stay with the amp in case somebody uh, turns up uh, in the future an original uh, Gibson uh, reverb tank for this, then they can reinstall that output transformer. Okay, the foot switch is safely nestled here in its uh, little bracket and if you look here on top, look what I got. A really nice, I think color coordinated jewel that will cover that pilot light and goes along with the overall sort of amber gold look of the cabinet. Also, while we're back here looking at the control panel, it's kind of interesting to see above the tiny lettering that says GA2RT uh, is the uh, serial number 210099. Now, I understand there are only like 350 of these ever made. And looking at this, uh, I would say there's a possibility it might have been the 99th one, or at least uh, it was very early in the run of the GA2 RTs. Okay, now that we've uh, fully reviewed the rear, uh, let's turn the cabinet around and check out the front and sides and top before we have our final audio uh, demonstration. Now let's review the rest of the cabinet. Uh, top right corner we have the Gibson nameplate uh, attached with screws into that uh, wood square that was uh, included on the baffle uh, beneath the real cloth for this purpose. Second, we look at this perfect and nice taut grill cloth that was reinstalled. We see that the top uh, is in actually in probably the best shape of any of the original panels on the amp, which is strange, but it's nice and clean and shiny. The sides badly stained, but smooth and glossy. Both sides, and we have a reasonably shiny control panel now with knobs that are at least of the same type uh, and that look okay together and of course our new amber jewel. So I guess that's about it here on the review of the work that's been done. So uh, let's proceed then with the audio demonstration. Okay, we're out here in the workshop uh, with uh, Ollie and Jack. They're all tuned up and let's start off with a couple tunes uh, with no effects, just a uh, guitar plugged straight into the amp and clean. <laughs> Let's try a little tremolo now. We've got uh, oh about a four on the intensity and about a three on the speed.
Okay, now let's try the reverb at uh, a low setting, like uh, just below three. I guess that's about it uh, for this part two and concluding video in our video series featuring the Gibson Maestro Deluxe Reverb Echo model GA2RT. I hope you enjoyed it enough to subscribe to our channel and consider uh, becoming a Patreon patron or PayPal contributor. Uh, I've included links in the video description to assist you to do both. The amp is not completely finished yet. I still have some more uh, tuning to do on the circuit and uh, some experimentation with the speaker to optimize the sound. For a closing scene, I have something very unusual planned. Uh, I recently received an email from a band in Switzerland named Portable Negation who uh, apparently enjoys my videos and wrote a song entitled Uncle Doug that focuses on something I said in one of the videos about that knowledge is meant to be shared and not always for profit. Uh, and they like that enough to write this song, an original tune, and send it to me. Now I asked them if I could use it as an audio track in one of my videos and they graciously agreed. Uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm also going to include a link in the video description if you'd like to go to their website uh, to learn more about them. Now for the video portion of this, I'm going to include a photo montage of really, I think, beautiful pictures taken around this area and uh, including old cars and my own cars and, and things of that sort. Now the first 14 or so are going to be original uh, acrylic paintings uh, by my wife. Now she's quite an accomplished artist. I never really speak about this much but I thought I would share her artwork with you while we're listening to this uh, song uh, entitled Uncle Doug from Portable Negation in uh, Switzerland. So see what you think.
be shared. And not necessarily at the profit. <laughs>